Like most motorists passing the West Sussex town of Arundel, I spent some time last week in a jam at Cross Bush, one of the most bizarre road junctions ever. A child could design a better way of moving traffic into the single carriageway at 27. I then spent several hours in the countryside that grown-ups hope will alleviate this jam. Highways England proposes building a dual carriageway through a landscape filled with bluebells, orchids, historic hedgerows, a pond where a thousand toads gather in spring, and ancient trees where 13 of Britain's 17 breeding bat species fly. Engineers are now deciding between three routes, all of which destroy precious water meadows and woodland, one option obliterates a massive 24 hectares, and pass through the South Downs National Park. Trees that have been alive since the Norman Conquest have less legal protection than listed buildings, and ancient woodland, designated as over 400 years old, urgently needs specific legal protection. However, Arundel Spypass illustrates the hazards in such conservation designations. They simply encourage developers to let rip on unprotected land. West Sussex County Council favours the most southerly route, which avoids the largest incursions into the National Park. But the bluebells don't stop where woodland becomes less ancient. Nor do the rare bats, bees or butterflies. The whole of our countryside is greater than the sum of its parts, and new roads not only bring pollution, noise and light, as well as air, they fragment and isolate the species we share our world with. Are we prepared to trade such wealth, peace? space, clean air, dark skies, other species, for a road that will save motorists, at best, 10 minutes in 2041, before they hit the A27S next pinch point at Worthing or Chichester. I once asked for directions when I was lost and was told, I wouldn't start from here. So, too, with utterly futile road building, which only drives more traffic and more pollution. Start here instead, no new roads. No new roads doesn't mean abandoning local residents to apocalyptic jams. A fraction of the £250 million, plus Arundel bypass cost could build motorway-style junctions at bottlenecks such as Cross Bush. Free-flowing 40 miles per hour traffic on the existing single carriageway is less polluting than vanity bypasses. But a no new roads policy must persuade motorists such as me to use their cars less. Vehicles travelled 68 billion miles on British motorways in the year to June, up by more than a third since the 1990s. This is disastrous for, almost, everyone. Congested Cambridge is examining proposals for a £2.8 billion underground light railway to link its high-tech businesses, which are plonked on 20th century roads. There are questions over the scheme's viability but it looks much cheaper if we calculate the true cost of our car addiction. Better protected than most countryside, cathedrals are a sensible choice for peregrine falcons looking to prosper. Particularly now that towers and spires from Derby to Salisbury have been fitted with nest platforms for our fastest moving animal. This religious patronage is a source of exasperation for the Royal Pigeon Racing Association, the Queen has 160 racing pigeons in lofts at Sadrigham, and for Pigeon Racing UK and Ireland, which warns that the sport is in danger of extinction.